Hey y'all, how you doing? I'm sitting in my swing chair, letting my son do his thing. Hey, come back over here. Come back over here, good boy. Come over here, thank you. All right, so let's talk about narcissists and one of the things that's a real issue with them, which you guys already know this, you've heard this before, you've heard this numerous times. And so we're not only gonna talk about it, but we're gonna talk about ways to dismantle it. And one of them is, there's a couple of things that are weaknesses for them. One of them is they can't be alone, okay? They cannot be without a relationship. They cannot be without having somebody by their side, admiring them. It feeds their ego. It helps them breathe, okay? So they're obsessed with can't be alone. They have to be with somebody. They have to have supply from somebody, whether it's admiration, money, a baby, a place to live, whatever. We've talked about this before, okay? Another issue is they have an obsession with control. Control, control, control. And some things that you think might be cute might actually not be cute because it's a form of control. Let me give you an example. So you, um, you just start seeing somebody and you tell them i'm you know i'm gonna be out with my friends from about seven to about nine ish or seven to ten something like that we're gonna be we're gonna go out we're gonna have dinner we're gonna have drinks the whole bit and so i won't be able to i don't use my phone obviously when i'm with other people right but this person can't handle that so they want you at their beck and call regardless of what you said regardless of who you're going to be with and regardless of what time you said you were not going to be available because you're, you don't want to be rude and use your phone in front of other people. So this person overlooks all of what you said and decides, you know what? They decide to go and text you and text you and text you and text you many, many, many times. And they're going to call you many, many, many times, even though your phone is on do not disturb. That's not cute. That's not ad admirable. That is a form of control. I know what you said, but I really don't care what you said. You need to be available at my beck and call. I don't care who you hang it with. What, what that got to do with me? That is in the narcissist Bible. One of the first things in there, or one of the second things in there, whatever it is, is what that got to do with me. So your needs are irrelevant. How you feel is irrelevant. And so instead of thinking, oh my God, they miss me so much. Oh, that's so sweet. That's not sweet. That's control. And it's a 1000% middle finger to what you said you needed. I need some, you know, I need a little window here because I'm going to be busy with my friends. Okay. And, um. You're okay, sweetheart. Hold on, guys. You're okay. You're okay. Mommy's just making sure you got your collar thingy on. You're good. Go play. Go play. It's okay. So that's not cute. That's control. And a total disregard for your needs. Total disrespect to the people you're hanging with. Okay. Total disrespect, total disregard. So you got two choices. Number one, if they're doing this right out the gate, it don't get no better from here. I personally would consider getting rid of the person because we just started and already you acting a damn fool and already you're ignoring my needs. Get back here. You stay over here now. Come here. Oh, uh, sorry, guys. Mother watching her child. Where's he at now? I hear him. Stay over here, pumpkin. Thank you. Good boy. That's a good boy. He can explore places I can't go because he got four legs. And so he could climb up all these straight up and down 
ridges and hills that I can't do all that. <laughs> I wish I would. That ain't gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. He has an advantage. He got four legs. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Anyway, so move right along. Um, it's not cute, and already the person's disregarding. They're already disregarding. Already. So it doesn't get any better from here. Don't let them say, oh, I'm sorry. I totally forgot you were going to be unavailable. Bullshit. They knew you weren't going to be available. They did not care. That is a form of control. I don't think we're compatible. You, you're already disregarding my needs right out the gate. And it don't get better from here. So this we're not compatible. Don't let them talk you into it. Don't let them try to persuade you otherwise. I don't know what I was thinking. You know, I, sh I forgot about it. You know, da 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 da. Nope, 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 nope. Mm -mm. If they miss you that much, what they would do is say, oh, you're going to be available. Well, I'd love to talk to you before you go to bed. Or, you know, let me know when you're on your way home so I could talk to you on your way home. Keep you company. Keep you, you know, make sure you're safe on the road or whatever. But you don't need to hog that person's window of time that they told you they were going to be busy. You need to freaking chill out. So you have to start to dismantle their power. That is the most important thing to them is power and control. So you have to dismantle that. Okay. And like I said, the person's on probation right out the gate. And if they cannot adhere to what you're saying and what your needs are, that means they are not, they're not good for you. Um, Another, you know, there's, there's other ways that they try to control, you know, the way you talk, the way you walk. And I've been through this. I'm not pulling this out of my left ear. I've been through this with the way I talk, the way I walk. Why do you hold your fork like that? Um, if they can micromanage everything about you, why do you wear your hair like that? I know one lady on her first date, I'm watching him. I, I, I don't go too far. Come back. Good boy. Thank you. One lady said she took a long time to grow her hair out. It took a while for her hair to grow. You know what this fool said? This is the first time he's seeing her. The first time he's seeing her. And I talked about this a while back. You know, you would look so good with your hair cut. She said, do you know how long it took me to grow my hair out? Are you crazy? And she left. I left him standing there looking. Oh, I know what it was. Let me let me be more specific. He took out a magazine. That's right. They were in a bookstore. He took out a magazine. He was flipping through it. And he said, you would look good with this hairstyle. And it happened to be a short hairstyle. And she's like, you know how long it took me to grow my hair? <laughs> right out the gate, I have to establish control. The way you walk, talk, the way you dress. The length of your skirts, the length of your hair, the way you wear your makeup, that color or lipstick, that's not, that's not going to work. That, why do you wear that? You're, you, got, you got some bright nail polish on, don't you? These are micromanagey things that they try to do. And if you comply right out the gate to please them, you've just made the biggest mistake you could make. Because you're, you're an adult. You could wear pink, purple pink purple polka dots on your nails you can do what that frick you want to do with your nails your hair your makeup your clothes get back over here you got so much to explore you got endless land over here you don't have to go that way come 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 mira ven aquí perito ven aquí thank you yes my son's bilingual sometimes when he wants to be no i've taught him siéntate and I taught him uh, Ben Aki, and um, I don't know. I mean, I call him Perito, which is a, a dog, a puppy. So, yeah, he knows a little bit of Spanish. He understands it. Anyway, they will micromanage everything about you. Why do you have that kind of car? Um, why do you, you work that kind of job? I would never, I would never imagine you do that kind of work. Everything about you will be micromanaged. Dump the person in the beginning because you're going to dismantle the control. Dismantle the control, break it down, and get rid of it. It's like somebody took a sandcastle where 
you wouldn't do this because it's mean, right? So somebody made a sandcastle, and that represents their whole everything, their creativity and their artistic talent, you know, everything. And the narcissist comes over there and kicks it. Just because. I don't want a sandcastle there. They kick it and knock it over. Meanwhile, it took you an hour to build it because it's got all these lookout points and it's got multi levels and it's overlooking this and it's overlooking that and it's got these intricate details and, and what looks like bricks and all kinds of intricate details. Mm hmm. I'm, they're going to kick it. Your hours worth of work gone. So we're not having that. We're not having that. Once, because once you realize, and you already know this, you should know this, you are grown. You are an adult. You do not have to let anybody, and you should not let anybody dictate who you are like they are your parent. You don't want your partner to be your parent, but if you're dealing with a narcissist who is obsessed with control, they're going to be your daddy or they're going to be your mommy. You're an adult. You don't need that. I'm not saying you don't need a mom or dad. You don't need somebody bossing you once you're grown. Even when you're grown, your actual parents don't need to be bossing you either. They could say, you know, well, I, I don't agree with it. But it's your life. If that's what you want to do, I'll be supportive of it. But it, it wouldn't be my choice, but that's totally up to you. They can't say, I'm confident. You're grown, right? I'm confiscating your cell phone. You're going to be on punishment. You're being grounded. You're going to sit in this chair right now. And we're going to have a long talk about this because I don't know what you think you're doing. They're not going to do that because you're grown. And if they do, you need to sever ties with them. Mm. Did I go there? Yes, I did. You don't owe your parents nothing. I told you this before. You don't owe your family anything. You don't owe your parents anything. And if you have a narcissistic parent, they're also going to try to boss you and guilt you into always taking care of them. We talked about that before. Enmeshment, parental, child enmeshment. It's extremely unhealthy. You're an adult. You're supposed to be doing adult things. You're supposed to be able to spread your wings, leave the nest, do your thing. If they won't permit you to do that, that's unhealthy for you. Very unhealthy for you. Okay. So we have to dismantle the control. Uh, let me see. Sometimes, like the one person that I was involved with back in the day, <sighs> he had an obsession with when you use the toothpaste, make sure it's totally clean and you close it shut all the way. Make sure you get out of the chair, you push it underneath the table. Make sure when you use the ketchup, there's no ketchup left on the rim. I mean, I am not, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm serious as a heart attack. Micromanage everything. I said, I got to the point, we were engaged, and I got to the point where I said, I'll tell you what, I'll have my uh, toothpaste and you can have yours. And he said, Dad, we're not going to waste money like that. I said, I'll, I'll spend my money the way I want to spend my money because I'm not going to have you dictate how I use my damn toothpaste. Now there's the, the pump things. You just squeeze it out and the rest gets sucked back in so it reduces mess or whatever. But back then that wasn't an option. But he was going to micromanage the toothpaste in the, in the chairs and, and the ketchup and everything. We just going to micromanage everything up in here. Before you know it, you're turning into somebody you don't recognize if you fall for this game. They're stealing your identity and controlling you at the same time. They're stealing your identity and controlling you at the same time. You're a grown-ass person. We ain't having none of that. No. You get rid of them right away. And it shouldn't bother you. You know why? Because you just started seeing each other. You don't have feelings for them. You don't have love for them. Forget it. New York accent coming out slowly. <laughs> Forgot about it. <laughs> I'm looking at what he has. I didn't know. Got something. A bone? Some type of bone. I don't know what it is. Some type of animal bone. Looks like a jawbone. What is that, Milo? Whatever it is, it's weird. He's like, I'm a dog. That's what we do. 
Um, so don't let yourself be micromanaged. Don't let yourself be insulted at the same time. So I'm going to micromanage you and I'm going to squash you like a bug simultaneously. You know, when you know what their weaknesses are, they can't be alone. Uh, they have to control somebody and it's always going to be their partner. And if they can get away with controlling other people too, that's what they will do. They will be, um, Anybody can and can try to control you. It could be a family member. It could be a friend. It could be a relative of a friend. Did I go there? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know. Bitch gonna decide that I'm not gonna have a car. The car that I was supposed to get. Because she doesn't want me to have it. And as long as I know him. Now that I know how he is. I will never permit him. If I have any say so about it. Because he's a hard headed mofo. If I have any say so about it, he will never, ever, ever put himself in a position to do any type of business with her, any type of agreement with her, any type of anything where that bitch can renege on her end of the bargain. And she is a bitch and I don't give a shit who don't like it. She is. She's a narcissistic bitch. I, as long as I have any say so, he will never, ever, 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 ever put her in a position where... She benefits when somebody in the family dies because that's how she got her grandma's house because her father busted his ass and dealt with his supremely narcissistic brother who wanted to take the house from under her and her children. But my friend fought tooth and nail and put up with his brother's endless bullshit in order for her to get the house. And her thank you was this. You ain't never did nothing for me. No way. See what I'm saying? So you have to get rid of these people. You have to dismantle their control. His way to dismantle her control is to never have any type of dealings with her ever again. Never do anything for her. Never go out of your way for her. And another thing that she did is... Um, sorry, I'm looking at what he's got. Looks like a jawbone creepy anyway it's a dog thing um they like to take your money and keep theirs i told you this before this is another way to control you now i want you to look at what's going on with her she got three jobs and it, one of them i don't think she works that often which is her choice but if you have three jobs and you get paid every two weeks you got one, two, three sets of checks coming. Depending on how often you work those jobs, you got three sets of checks. Because you got one, well, two sets of checks, my bad. Two, no, three sets, because you're going to get two checks from the first job, two checks from the second job, if you work, depending on your hours, you get two checks from the third job, and then she gets $500 a month from the house that she rents. She's making money hand over fist, hand over fist, hand over fist. And she had the nerve lately, recently. And I'm going to talk some sense into him. Can you let me have the $200 that I gave you? Can you give it back to me? Because I need it for my dog. Do you honestly think with multiple incomes coming in, coming in per month, do you honestly think... She needs to borrow $200 from some damn body. I will have a chit chat with him about that. I've, I've talked to him about that before and I'm going to tell him, don't you dare give her another penny. As long as you got breath in your body, don't you fucking dare. I don't give a flying rat's ass what her problem is. Her complaint is the kids are starving. Well, I'll tell you what, next time I go to the food uh, bank, that's what he can tell her. Next time I go to the food bank, I'll get y'all some food. Don't you dare. Because if you think a female or male narcissist won't use their kids to make you feel sorry for them, you crazy as hell. Of course they will. My kids have been having peanut butter and jelly every day. Really? And you have how many checks coming in per month? You're doing something wrong. If you got money coming in and it's going out at the same time it's coming in, you're doing something wrong. Most people can't make it on two jobs and you got three and an, and an additional income and you ain't got no money. Bullshit. 
And I did talk to him about that before. He's in denial because he still thinks that. I think he's finally starting to get a clue now. Oh, family wouldn't do that to you. Family wouldn't do that to you. Family. You must be out of your freaking tree. You have got to be out of your tree. If you think that that bitch got that much money coming in and she ain't got no money. People are struggling on two jobs and she got the equivalent of four. Would you give her another penny as long as you live because she's playing you? I said, and I told him point blank, I said, she's shopping her ass off on Amazon. She's buying new clothes all the time. She bought a whole new fancy seat covers for her cars. That ain't cheap. She's buying socks to match her shoes, to match her outfit. She's shopping her goddamn ass off, buying little knickknacks here and there and a whole new wardrobe and everything else. You think she's broke? Are you stupid and crazy? I said, don't you give her another penny. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you freaking dare. Because her money is her money and your money is her money. Y'all better listen to what I'm telling you because if you don't, you're going to pay. You're going to pay. Literally and figuratively, you're going to pay. So you have to, you got to pay attention to what I'm saying to you. You have to dismantle, dismantle their power. They have an obsession with money. Um, they have an obsession with control. They have an obsession with, they cannot be alone and they cannot be faithful. These are their obsessions and these are their obsessions. Um, their, their weaknesses, obsessions. And you have to, you got you to gotta break free. Once you know what their weakness is, I want you to take a, 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 a target and, you know, what is that thing you throw at a target? Like a air, whatever the thing is that you throw. I want you to hit it bullseye. Once you realize what's happening, I want you to hit it bullseye and I want you to dismantle it right now, right here and right now. Don't worry about their sob story. Um, because people don't have money anymore, there's going to be a lot more conniving, lying, tricking, uh, crimes, everything. Crimes are going to go through the roof, which is all part of the plan for a certain political party. This is all part of the plan to increase crime and to strain everybody's wallet. This is all part of the fucking thing that they do. Okay. The way you dismantle that is you don't vote for people who have no interest in protecting you and looking out for you and here's another thing and we're just going to go there for like a quick second people will relocate out of state because that's a certain party state that starts with a d they will relocate to a different state and vote for the same god dang party all over again well shit you just shot yourself in the foot didn't you you shot yourself right in the foot because you escaped it but you didn't escape it because your loyalty is stronger than your sense if somebody don't have respect for me, you think I'm going to support them? You think I'm going to be in their corner? You've got to be smoking something. You know, when you get older, I'm hoping you get wiser. And the things that I've learned, I'm going to teach you so that you know not to put up with this crap. Because you'll smell game a mile away and you're going to be like, mm -mm -mm, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. And I'm going to tell you this quick thing real quick. This is another thing that's going to continue to happen because you force people, you push them against the wall and they're going to start doing crazy shit. One guy, I saw a news clip where he had a, was it a smartphone? And he unlocked the gas uh, pump and stole 800 gallons of gas. How he did it, I don't know. How you could even, where you would put 800 gallons, I have no idea. But that's what they claim he stole. The amount that he stole. I don't know if he did it over a period of time or what. Well, what did you expect? Of course people are going to steal. Of course they're going to do horrific things. Because A, they can. And B, they're tired of getting yanked. Now this person might have been a criminal their whole life. So you're going to take advantage of anything and everyone. But you're, they encourage things like this. When you start karate people. You know, karate kicking people in their wallet. It's going to cause all kinds of a snowball effect. That's not good for anybody. So, anyways, it's 80-something degrees today, and it's not really bad. There's a slight breeze. Um, later in the week, it's going to be 89. <sighs> anyway, you guys be cool like ice cubes. Mama loves you, and I'll talk to you later. Okay? Thank you. Bye.